That's uh, Jingle Bell Rock, complete with uh, accidental deliberate error right at the finale. Um, very interesting uh, song, very unusual structure to it. It's in um, five parts. Yeah, you have two and a half verses. You have verse one, verse two, bridge. Verse three, which is only half a verse, which goes straight into the coda, and then the, the final chorus. Um, each verse is slightly different as well. Um, but I guess the first thing to uh, look at is the intro. So the intro is based on the melody of Jingle Bells itself, which I'll play for you now. Which I played right at the end as well. Um, I don't think you can see this. I'm on the um, barring or double stopping, if you prefer, uh, the E and the A string on the ninth fret, and with my in the uh, middle finger, I'm coming down on the 10th fret of the E string for the start of the riff. And that's Jingle Bells. Jazzed up a little. Welcome Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, right. Then you come off, uh, you raise this finger off. That gives the second part of the phrase. The third part of the phrase, this finger comes back down. Pinky comes onto the 12th fret of the A string. And jump, and then you jump down to the fifth fret of the, uh, and, and you bar across the uh, E and the uh, A string. Now I've seen a lot of guitar instructions for this riff and what they tend to do is, is show you the top part here, stop and then go and show the second part down here. But this riff is in phrases of three, it's very hard for an Essex boy to say, phrases of three. And the first of those three phrases is, the second is, the third is, so it's very important to practice that jump. So I'll do that again. It's going to be very quick to get down there and quite precise. You then uh, with your uh, ring finger, uh, you double stop the E and the A strings on the 7th fret. You see that? 7th fret. Which is again part of the phrase. This would be uh, jingle bell, let's see. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle, all the. That's all the. But you don't go back to way. You Instead, you suggest it by then bending the strings. So, yeah. Got this plugged in. This uke uh, uh, was made for me by Neil Kavanagh of Kingstown Ukes in uh, Dunleary, Dublin, Ireland. It's a fantastic luthier, and if you want one, go and uh, uh, get in touch with him. Find Kingstown Ukes on Facebook most uh, other fine social media outlets. Um, it's uh, semi-hollow. It's, it's a hollow body but there's no sound hole in it. It's, it's actually a, a, a literally a one-third uh, size telecaster. Um, I've got it plugged into my little so you can see that, that orange amplifier. Just to give it some twang. And orange, these are fantastic little amps, and orange 
micro terror, 20 watts of uh, valvey goodness. Right, anyway, but occasionally I'm going to hear that uh, the crackling noise. So where were we? Yeah. Um, so we're bending up. We've, we've jumped, we've gone. Then bend up for the all. And then we've launched ourselves into our rock and roll riff. Back down, hit them. That's the third time you've hit those uh, uh, two strings on the seventh fret. Back to the fifth fret. Then on the seventh fret, you're hitting the C and the E strings. See that? C and E strings. So. things out of the way so you can see this. Right. And then the bluesy bit is you hit the um, uh, C string, you can hit the E string as well if you like, and then you hammer on to sixth fret. You complete the riff by playing the uh, G string at the seventh fret. Now you'll notice you might be able to see that that's a D chord. So A, B, C, D. And that's where the song will be starting off on, with this D shape. Well, this arrangement mostly. But before we get into the melody, we're going to play the. Uh, we're going to refer. We're not playing the bass drum. We're going to reference the bass drum. And to do that, we um, come up to the ninth fret on the C string. So our pinky hit that twice. Then the seventh fret on the C string once. Sixth fret once. 4th fret C string once. And we're into the song. 9, 7, 6, 4. And there we are, ready to start the, uh, the actual uh, song. So, just to recap. So, going back to this D shape, um, and we have the first part of the melody. This melody is. That's the same in the first two verses, they change after that. So we have, there's the first note, that D note. Second note, this C sharp, I'm picking up with the, the, uh, this F sharp minor chord, the top note of the F sharp minor chord. As I say, some some uh, chord sheets have this a D major seventh, but D major seventh is simply an F sharp uh, minor chord with a D in the bass, so this is fine. And then we come down for the next note, 
for a d6 or a b minus 7. Uh, all minor 7th chords are also, d6, are also 6 chords. Um, uh, the, uh, the sixth note in the uh, sixth chord is the root note of the minor seventh chord. So this is a D, F sharp, A, B, and a B minor chord would be B, D, F sharp, A, F. Blah blah. So the point is, if you see, if you see, oh no, that's wrong. It should be B minor seven, not D six. It's the same chord. And then you come back, now we are actually going to play a D major 7th chord here now because we want to come back to this note here, the C sharp and there, so there's your F minor there's your D in the bass so lovely sweet chords uh, in that major 7th like dominant 7th which are over a diminished chord with a D in the bass. It's so much more violent that sounds than that. That's why they're always hurrying on to something else, synth chords, very urgent chords. But back to D6. Back to the D uh, major 7. D6, and then to D sharp diminished seventh. See, there's that D seventh we just mentioned with this diminished, this diminished uh, chord uh, over a D root. And, to turn, and, and all we have to do is just raise the, the, the root note by a semitone to turn it into a proper diminished seventh chord. Which I tend to play like this. So we have we then slide the pinky up to the back to the D note on the A string. We then uh, bar the uh, or double stop if you prefer the G and the C strings on the fourth fret. I, I tend to just mash my finger down, my middle finger down to do that, and my middle finger comes onto the third fret of the uh, E string. So pinky and first finger like this, and these come down here. Or like this if you prefer on that fourth fret don't know how possible that is and there's that's an E minor seventh chord and from there you go to this A seventh chord Be, not be a chord that's familiar to you, but what you do is you take the G shape and that's what we've got there, we've got a G, a B and a D, move it up two frets, now I've got an A, a C sharp and an E, but this open G string is now acting as the seventh, the dominant seventh to this A chord. this bit. And that's the note we're going to land on, that G note, we should pick up on that A7th. So we're going So 
sorry, there. shape because we want to dancing and prancing no there's a snowing and blowing up bushels of fun that E minor 7 is picking up the start of this uh, line and the A and this A chord is picking up the A note at the end of the line line of this verse is different to last line of the second verse. We go back to C minor 7th, no, because the last line of this verse goes something like, uh, let's, there's a, there's a, that's a B flat, I'll do it this way. Let me do it up here, then. Make more sense. And you're hitting that F note there. So what you have to do is you go now the jingle hop A seventh. Is that's an augmented chord. We had an A7 chord, an augmented chord, we've got to raise the fifth note in the chord by a semitone. Well the fifth note is this E, we've, said, we've already said we've got an A, C sharp and an E, so to make this A augmented we've got to raise that note to an F. And the way I do it is I just mash. You can do it like this if you like. That's going to be a real finger tangler though. You can actually leave that note in actually if you prefer. And then it's A augmented 7th. Or take it out by putting the finger there and making, putting it back in augmented triad. I kind of prefer it that way but there you go. Show you that very clear. Okay, you can't see that. So there's my A seventh chord, barring across those three strings. There's my finger coming down there to make it A seventh. Then I move that finger over to there for the F. That finger comes over to there. That is A7 augmented, and that is A7, uh, A augmented. So we got. I prefer, as I say, just to squish my finger down across those notes, but those are the notes you're holding down. Um, four, 
five five six or four five five oh yeah so the second verse is exactly the same as the first So we're up to jingle verse square now. But then it goes to E7. The E7 I'm playing is this D7 shifted up to the uh, uh, fourth fret. In the A7 frosty and back to that D air. So they're going. Um, Let's uh, so we're going to let you stuff in. Dancing in a pretty in a jingle bell square in the frosty air. That's not all the way up there. So you're ending up on this high D note uh, at the end of the second verse, where you're ending up on this low F note at the end of the first verse. So you're going, uh, as I say, what does it say? Now the jingle hop has begun. <laughs> and the reason we want to be up here is because our next chords are going to be a G major and a G6 chord. It's going to be a lot easier to get to like this. So this is, and, and, and what I'm doing here is I'm taking this E shape. Again, I'm, I'm mashing my finger down. Uh, I play uh, my uh, E like that. So a lot of people play it like that. I've never been able to do that. Well, it's a lot easier just to mash my finger down across those three strings. So I'm moving that, sliding that up here now uh, with my, uh, this bar is on the, uh, 7th fret and my first finger is down here because I want this G6 to come in, G major 6. So. so that bit is, um, so the, the melody is going, uh, where were we, yes, in the frosty air is um, The next part of the melody is it's the right time, it's the bright time, it's the right time. That's and we're doing that, we're getting that by having um and then we come down to this we don't carry on keep on that chord because we come to this G sharp diminished. Chord. And we're getting, and, and we slide. I don't know if you can see. Um, well, I'm, 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 I'm so. Uh, to, let me go back to this. So, so what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm playing this E shape like this on the seventh fret. And then I'm laying my finger all the way down to make this uh, uh, minor seventh or G six shape, and then raising it up again. So it's the right time, such a bright. And what I'm doing here is uh, four, five, four, five. And then sliding my pinky up to the seventh fret in the A string. And the reason is that uh, I want, because after bright time, right time, it goes to rock the night away. And I want to be in this position for rock the night away. That is, barring on the second fret with my pinky on the. Um, fifth fret of the A string 
as a D chord. C chord moved up and barred. Because I want to go, because this bit goes, uh, after it goes. It goes. And I can do this all by running down those D shapes. And then I, while holding down the G, C and E strings, I'm lifting my finger up so I can play that open A. So, because the next part is based on this, and this is a bit I've got confused a lot of people because it's to rock the night away, two, three, jingle is on four, one is this D6 chord. And that's jingle because it goes, no, sorry, that's no, that's bell. So, rock the night away. Two, three, jingle. The hell time. And the 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 the, um, the note slurs up from the uh, D to the E on bell. So you so what you you're following that. So so the actual first note of the of the of this uh, first chord of this bar is this D six, which slides up to this E seven. So it's um to rock the night away two three jingle bell time and then you slide up to uh, make an E chord that's the E for swell time because you're going um then we're going. So, so that's the jingle bell. Jingle bell time is a swell time. All right, and then you've got uh, the the bit where they all stop. But we can play that bit by doing this. I've got my pinky uh, on the uh, uh, fifth fret of the E string and my ring finger on the fourth fret of the C string then I um, pinky and uh, ring finger on the third on the both on the seventh fret so goes that's to go and one is up on the C sharp uh, ninth fret, and it's just one. Right. To go riding in a one horse sleigh. Yeah. And then we're into the final uh, part of the song. And and for this, I am using this uh, this D sharp D major just for variety. D D major seventh. Um, we go. And this is giddy up uh, jingle uh, jingle balls, but you'll notice it only goes halfway through before it changes, before it, it comes right over and goes into the coda. So. So far, so good. Now it changes. Right? Now into the coda. Right? So we're going to play that like this um, D major. And now we go 
to this F sharp minor seven flat five. It's a half diminished chord. You'll notice how similar it is to uh, this chord. And that's because no matter how you make, well, there's an F7, there's an F7. Right, you probably think it's like this, but no, really an F7, you should be holding, you should be holding um, your pinky on the, on the C of the, of the A string, third fret. Your um, first finger on the F of the, uh, the first fret of the E string. Your third finger, your ring finger, should be on the, um, because that's what's making the seventh note, the E flat here on the C string. And then finally the A note is here, right? And bearing in mind what I said, once you've got a seventh chord, if you raise the root by a semitone, it becomes a, 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 a diminished seventh chord. And the root is on the F, so you raise that by the semitone. And there's our F sharp diminished seven, which is identical to our D sharp diminished seven. So we've got an F sharp diminished seventh like this, but we don't want that. We want it just. Uh, we want it just being F sharp. Um, we don't want it fully diminished. We want it half diminished. So what we do is we stop diminishing this uh, uh, this E note here and put it back uh, from E flat to E which I'm going to do like this so it looks a very different chord on paper but it's very very similar and the reason we're going for that is the next chord is this B7 I think we're going for a B7 there because I have seen a, a, an instructional video where it goes to a G, but uh, there's a thing in jazz where you um, dominance of dominance, so that uh, instead of play, so a song that would go for oh actually it's subdominant here, so instead of playing the uh, the uh, uh, the chord you expect, you play its fifth. It's, uh, and the fifth of a, of a G chord is a B7 chord. So you go to the B7 chord. So we're going like this. Um, And that's, and you'll notice we've moved that finger from that was our D uh, diminished seventh in the previous chords, and we've moved uh, we've moved uh, that uh, note from there to there to make this F sharp uh, uh, half diminished chord, F sharp minor seven flat five chord, whatever you want to call it, because we want to emphasise this note in the next chord. Which is this B7 chord. So we go. And then we slide back up to our G to give us the. Play all that by first of all having the G. Can do after all. And then that uh, G becomes a G minor. And then finally it becomes a G minor six. So G mix and G major six back to the G then G minor 
find that G major, then minor six. And we slide back down now, find the final bit of the song. That's at E7. That's A7, G, Bell. That's the G. Oh, sorry. The song actually goes around uh, t uh, sort of like two and a half times because at the end of the uh, first go round, it simply goes E7. That's the jingle bell rock. And back up to here. But in the, uh, in the final go round, it, it does this three times. And you're going, this is a bit I can never do right. That's what we're doing here. And we slide up to make this A5 chord. An A5 chord is a power chord. And finally land back on the D. Just a little fuddy can go back to jingle bells. And that's how you play jingle bell rock on an ukulele. <laughs>